Uh, item number 10, conduct of business. Our first item is adopt a resolution approving the Culture and Arts Commission recommendation for a centennial art project concept and site. Good evening, Mayor Wayne, members of the City Council. Uh, oh, sure. um, I'm Don Alita. I'm the Assistant Library Services Director, and I uh, serve as a staff to the Culture and Arts Commission. I'm here this evening to uh, present a recommendation to you from the Culture and Arts Commission for a uh, centennial art project concept and a site. I am joined tonight by the chair of the commission, Melody Tobin, and Commissioner Tammy Parker. Uh, at the close of my report, uh, the chair will uh, elaborate a little further on, on the, uh, the idea for, uh, for the concept in sight. Um, this item uh, goes back to July uh, 2012. The commission presented their annual report to you. Uh, at that time, they also indicated their interest and their intent to uh, develop a concept and recommend a site for a centennial art project to uh, commemorate the city's 100 uh, year anniversary, which falls next December uh, 2014. The uh, commission uh, left that meeting and went back to their regularly scheduled meetings to uh, develop this further. Uh, they quickly uh, decided on, a, on a, a concept of something that would be a two-dimensional uh, mural or similar piece of work. And they were interested in something that would depict periods of San Bruno history because it was a fitting topic to commemorate the um, centennial. Once they uh, settled on that concept, they began to look at uh, various sites within the city. They had already developed a list of sites uh, over their uh, years as a commission, and they took that list. And in addition to that list, they also reviewed uh, some locations that fell, fall within the transit corridors plan area. They looked at the sites for uh, a, a few criteria. First, they wanted uh, to find a site that would suit the concept that they had of a uh, mural depicting some periods of history, the city's history. They also wanted to find a site that had uh, a visual impact where either motorists or pedestrians or both would see the work uh, and have it be, have some exposure. They also uh, looked at locations relative to where other public art was placed in the city. And uh, finally, they looked at the ownership of the, the, the potential properties to see uh, if, if it was city property or, or not. The commission, after that process, did settle on uh, three locations that they felt uh, were kind of finalist sites. That was, those were the uh, one or more of the retaining walls that are located along Sneath Lane uh, between uh, roughly Claremont Drive and um, Quail Point Circle and the upper entrance to Claremont Drive. The uh, other two sites that they looked at were the location of the new Posey Park uh, at Huntington and San Mateo Avenue, and also at, <coughs> excuse me, the uh, intersection of uh, Huntington and Herman Street under the Interstate Interstate 380. The commissioners are, are recommending the site along Sneath Lane for uh, for the following reasons. Uh, first, they felt that the length and the spacing of the multiple walls along Sneath lent itself best to their, to their uh, idea concept. Sneath also provides uh, high visibility uh, in terms of traffic uh, coming uh, between 280 Skyline and El Camino. They also uh, were aware that there are no city commission public art projects on the west side of, two, uh, of 280 in the city. A lot of the art is concentrated towards uh, El Camino. And then, um, since this site is on city property, it uh, is easier to work with in terms of um, permitting, et cetera. And the other two alternative sites, they had some concern that either uh, having to work, possibly work with other agencies might not ensure the project would be delivered by the uh, anniversary date, by the centennial date. The, if, 
if you're uh, if you approve the recommendation uh, this evening of the site and the general concept then the Commission would return within two to three months and bring a draft request for qualifications uh, and draft agreement to you for approval what that would do would allow them to um, go out uh, advertise locally and nationally for uh, artists who have experience and who have a body of work that they can then look at to help them choose um, the the type of person they'd like to work with. They then, um, after that RFQ uh, was finished and the artist was recommended, they would then work more closely with the artist to develop a final visual concept that they would then bring back to you before any of the work begins. Once that's done, the artist would then go to the studio, um, produce the work, and then have it uh, completed uh, on or be before the anniversary date so it could be installed in time for the uh, centennial. There's no immediate fiscal impact to your approving the recommendation uh, of the site location and concept. However, um, the commission will need to develop a budget along with the artist when they do this project. And as they do that, they will uh, take into consideration the amount of, of the balance in the city art fund as it relates to the cost of the project and any other future projects that they would uh, like to like to do. Uh, at this point, um, I'd like to turn it over to the chair for uh, some more in-depth detail for, about their concept. Hi, good evening. Um, our concept for the public art um, as John said, was to depict some of the history of San Bruno, going back to the days when that area was Sneep Dairy, and really focusing on the history of San Bruno on the west side. So one of the things we really want to show is the natural habitat, maybe the um, Mission Blue Butterfly, the California poppies, the artichokes, and um, just some nice, simple visuals that will not be too distracting to traffic, but that will enhance the area. Um, as you know, that wall sometimes winds up being a canvas for graffiti. So of course, one of the things we're looking at is graffiti-proof paint. Are there any questions? Would uh, these have to be, would these be, you're talking about something that's painted directly on the concrete or would it be a two-dimensional piece that would be hung? We've looked at different applications and because the roadway is so narrow and the traffic is high density traffic area, we would probably have the artist produce it on another um, form that would be mounted to the retaining walls. Okay, so it would be done off-site. It would be done off-site, and then it would be installed in the, the wee hours of the morning when it would not impact traffic. Um, one of the things we've also discussed in our uh, broad plan is maybe landscaping the area behind it um, to ensure that the um, ivy doesn't grow over and obscure the, the murals. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Ken? Melody, you... you you mentioned, you know, as far as not being distracting, and that was the first thing that came to my mind. Is I, I wanted to know what, how the committee discuss driving up because it's, you know, it's windy, and you know, all of a sudden you get, you know, at least for the first couple of times, you'll you'll notice something, and you might just unconsciously slow down. So, so. Um, if I may approach the bench, <laughs> um, I'm not one of those PowerPoint girls. But I, I, feel, I feel like a judge. <laughs> <laughs> um, some of the photos that I brought for you are murals in other communities in California, specifically, that are on high visible traffic corridors. There's a wall in Aptos that is right on the frontage road of Highway 1. There are um, some, one of the projects that we'd like to see down the road are the signal power boxes 
and all through the Santa Cruz community, uh, they they paint and decorate those in amazing um, murals. So what our concept is for the entire four walls is for the murals to fade in, depict something, and fade out. So you're not busy swerving to look at one specific thing, but hopefully each time you drive through that area, you'll notice something else. You might not notice the poppies the first time. You might not notice the butterflies. You might not realize, oh, these cows mean there was a dairy there. Or I didn't realize that we had artichokes in San Bruno. Things like that. Uh, we, we understand um, traffic-related issues. The last thing we want to do is create uh, problems. And so we think other communities have done it successfully and that we can emulate that. Thank you. I kind of had some of the same thoughts as well. I was just up there not too long ago going, because you do go by fast, and then it would, I mean, it'd be like, oh, oh look at that. And then you do slow. It would be an automatic. <laughs> mm. So I guess in short, uh, has the police department reviewed the, this uh, this concept, and they think <laughs> as a traffic concern that that's not we one? We have of not reviewed it with the police department, but that's a good stopping point. We certainly will. Um, one of the things that we have batted this around for years is, um, and something that we would say to combat, you know, distraction is there's nothing more distracting than graffiti. At least over time, um, hopefully, and, and it's been shown in studies that once you have public art, there is less graffiti, that it won't be a distraction, and it'll be just something that you can enjoy as you go up or down Sneath. I think you're right about graffiti versus, you know, if you, if you, I mean, the, the couple of arts that we had over by uh, the grade separation as well as over on San Mateo Avenue, uh, they haven't been touched. So we've been blessed that way. And the other thing is, is that uh, you mentioned about uh, some of the landscaping above it, which I'd agree because the vegetation grows over, then that obviously defeats the purpose. But also, is there uh, what type of a cost that will be as an ongoing maintenance issue? Since obviously uh, there are many in the community that are looking for areas that need improvement, um, and then taking on another one, I just worry about overall continuing to keep the image that the community wishes. Staff has brought that up. <laughs> and we would certainly use some um, low maintenance, drought tolerant vegetation that we would work with staff on their recommendations. We're not talking about elaborate landscape. Um, poppies, something that would enhance the area, grow naturally, and not take maintenance. Uh, other than, you know, the ivy or the ice plant, whatever's there right now that's growing down the walls is something we certainly want to eliminate. I noticed uh, a lot of the examples that you, you gave us in the handout uh, are of uh, pillars, freeway pillars in San Francisco. And was any thought given to with those pillars a little further down under I-280 where San Bruno Avenue or, you know, uh, some of the other streets intersect? Or was that one of those uh, issues where you had to work with another government agency which could probably take a lot longer? That pillar is very unique, and I printed out the story behind <coughs> it as well. That is the very first pillar in California that was done on a freeway. Um, it had to be done cooperatively with Caltrans and a number of government agencies. We want to do something that we can show successfully that we've completed um, before we try and take on something like that. If we, and also because we do want to have it finished for the centennial, taking on a pillar at this point is probably not um, feasible. But we have looked at number of sites under the freeways, under um, 280 on San Bruno Avenue, under uh, 380 over behind Tan Fran. We, we've looked at a number of those sites and they are on our map as future sites. And it's definitely something that we want to focus on as we've talked about um, neighborhood art projects to 
um, announce and reflect neighborhoods, that might be something we can do for neighborhood gateway projects. Okay. Thank you. Michael? Yes, here. Thank you. Um, so one, uh, one question I had. So um, I, I drive through Hayward a lot in the, in the course of my uh, weekly commute, and they've done something really nice with a, a timeline uh, relating to, to Hayward, and it goes back to the Ohlone Indians and shows a progression. And I, I, so I agree with this concept overall. I think it's a really, a really good idea. Um, and these walls definitely uh, lend themselves to that sort of a, um, of timeline uh, artwork. But my concern would be that in this particular area, traffic tends to move rather quickly, and people may not even notice that it's there. And just from my experience, I've noticed that thing because there's a stoplight that kind of forces me to stop there, and so it's like, oh, hey, artwork. And so you look at it because you're stuck there. But if you're kind of racing past, and um, I think Sneath is one of those areas where people are kind of zipping through, and it's kind of a little bit secluded. Um, I'm just worried that nobody's going to notice it, and and I would I would hate for us to have something there that had this much thought, and you know, it's it's there, but maybe people aren't going to notice it. it. Doesn't really lend itself well to walking traffic, or even you know, if you wanted to do a walking tour of our public art, um, this is an area that's a little bit inaccessible. I was wondering if you guys had thought about that a little bit. I mean, I, I I'm not against the idea. I, I can't think of another place in the city that has this sort of a, a canvas. So I know it's difficult, but um, I mean, did you guys think at all about Oh, that? we have. Mm -hmm. we've, we've thought that through as well. Um, and one of the things that makes this unique is, um, A, you might not see it the first time. You might not see everything that's going on on the four walls the first time. And each time you drive through the area, you might discover something different. Also have the um, ability to go to that area because you've heard about these walls. I know at Christmas we all hear about the neighborhoods that decorate and um, we all go to, to those neighborhoods and, and check out their Christmas decorations. And I think this will be a nice destination drive as you're headed up to the college or you're exploring San Bruno and it's like, hey, where are those walls I keep hearing about or I keep seeing in the paper or I see on the PSAs or or, or whatever, but we we definitely don't think that they will be ignored or missed. We think it'll give people a reason to drive up that area, maybe drive a little bit slower because they want to see what's going on instead of just speeding up or down Sneath Lane. There are sidewalks on the opposite side, so I know parking is, is not something that you could easily do, but if we wanted to do a walking tour of it, we most certainly could walk down um, the other side. And hopefully it'll, it'll draw people there. But most importantly is we want people to slow down, take a minute, and really see a little bit at a time. And, and hopefully that's what they'll do. Rather than speed by and swerve into oncoming traffic, <laughs> it'll make people slow down and think about Wow! Look at the look at the progression of this, and and see how it flows, and not to be distracting, but to be enjoyable, and maybe take a time out and uh, take a deep breath, and and look at what's going on around you, and that's why we want it to be more environmental. Uh, we like the idea of a timeline. We don't want it to be distracting. We don't want it to be jump out and you know scare you, but something that blends and um, hides the, the, the blight of those walls. And it is truly the biggest canvas we have in the city. And we don't have anything, as John said, we haven't focused on that side of the city yet. Um, the first time we really thought about that area for public art was after the explosion. Um, and we didn't want to highlight the explosion or even commemorate it, but we also don't want to forget about that area. Um, so n we need to bring them a little bit of sunshine as well. And hopefully this will, will accomplish everything we want it to, and hopefully we'll be able to do it um, in a reasonable cost. 
Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything, Irene? Well, uh, I attended a couple of your meetings last year as the council liaison to the Arts and Culture Commission and heard some of this discussion. And I, I think you did an excellent presentation and explained all the thought process. They have really, the commission as a whole, and especially Melody under <coughs> their leadership as the chair, or her leadership as the chair, really thought through a lot of the issues here. Staff has helped them um, flesh out the kinds of things that you've heard her talk about. We've all driven past things on the freeways. We've all looked at signs. We've looked at um, you know, posters. We've looked at advertisements. We've looked at all those things. and and had to speed by them and, and nobody's swerved over and crashed or did all those things. So I think the concept is excellent that you're, you're doing a gradual thing. You're not doing a, a single sp splash of something. You're doing a, a gentle kind of gradual thing that people can see a repeat of, po uh, of whatever, like the butterflies. You're not gonna have one big butterfly. You're gonna have, if I understand the concept right, several butterflies so people can gradually be aware of them and things. So I think it's a, uh, an excellent idea. I think the canvas has long been neglected there, and I think that that neighborhood has long been neglected, and I think this would be a great centennial project. So okay. having said all those things, I'd like to, is it a resolution? Yes. I'd like to introduce the resolution. Can, can I ask a question on the resolution though, before we Maybe. vote on it? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I noticed that the resolution doesn't include any language around uh, commitment of funds, and so I'm wondering what the extent of the resolution is. So is this just approval of the concept, and then we'll come back with a, a cost estimate? Yes, we we want you on board. We we didn't want to come back and say we picked an artist, here's our budget, and then you're like, ah, no, not that wall. <laughs> we plan to you know, something else with that wall. So we are going to come back to you in our July yearly review and give you the full outline of what the plan is, how we're going to select and work with an artist, and what our budget is. One of the things we need to explore that we haven't explored yet is exactly what the fiscal impact is going to be on getting out there, measuring the walls, talking to some local artists and seeing what is the cost to do something like this? Um, and does it make a difference if we're doing gradual in and out as opposed to filling four walls with you know, high impact? We also want to make sure that the, the paint that we're using is not only graffiti proof but reflective so that it doesn't, you know, people don't drive into it. Okay. But we, we will get you those figures in July. Okay. But this is really just to approve our concept. So I'm introducing the resolution. Vice Mayor O'Connell. Hi. Excuse me. Council Member Ibera. Hi. Council Member Medina. Hi. Council Member Salazar. Hi. Mayor Ruiz. Hi. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, before we move on, just uh, since uh, the, some of the committees, are, uh, just on a side note, you know, the, we talked about just the artwork that used to be uh, where the grade separation is going, mm -hmm. and I know I'm hoping that was secured in storage uh, during this, but um, but I'm also wondering if it's not going to go back there, if there's another spot at the community, or if j during your agenda building, maybe that could be looked into. It, it is the it is our plan to go back there or to go to to bar, to go back in that area. Um, we do, well, we did have a member on the Great Separation Committee, but it is safely stored and waiting for its location to come back. Thank you. 